So if we look at the linear stochastic state space model, then what we, as mentioned before, we have a system up here if we are in the linear space, then the function here is just a constant times x of t, x of t minus 1, plus b times some input plus some noise, and then we observe the system. And we have x being the state, y being the observations, and then we have the input and two different noises. One thing that is important is that we ca say that for now, we assume that we know all these coefficient matrices and also the covariance matrices here. And we also assume that the system noise and the observation noise are independent. And we define the dimension of x as the dimension of system order that we're looking at. So that is the general formulation. And let me just put it over here so that we have it for reference later. xt equals a times xt minus 1 plus b u t minus 1 plus, and then we call that e1 comma t. And then we have the observation at yt is c times xt plus e2 t. Sometimes you also have that the output depends on an input and that you can add without changing the rest of the story, but that's just to complicate things. So the important thing, as mentioned before, this state vector fulfills the Markov property, which means that all information about the system is contained in the current estimate. And we can also handle time-varying systems by letting the coefficients here be depending on time. But we'll leave that for later. First, we'll go back to an, I would say, old example that we used already in the first lecture, where we're looking at the NO and NO2 concentration in Copenhagen. And we at that point, we postulated this model. So let's just assume the same model again here. And what we did then was say, what if the nitrogen oxide component or measurement was missing? How can we formulate this as a state space model? So first of all, we define the states, and we have the NO2 as the second state and NO as the first state in this case. So we have the parameter matrix A here. We ha don't have any input, so B becomes a zero. Then we have the variant of the system up here, covariance matrix for that noise. We have the observation. We only observe the second state, so it's a zero, one. And then we have the variance of the estimation error that we have over here. We just, for now, assume that we measure the state directly, which is, of course, an approximation. But that is to give the same result as what we saw in the first lecture. Another example is a classical example is a falling body. Let me see if I can find anything here. We could look at this box here. Basically, what you have is that you have it sitting at some location, some height, and then you have the initial condition, and init which contains the position and the velocity, and then you know the physics about this. And well, you can probably guess what's going to happen when I release this one. Yes, it does fall upwards if it has a positive velocity upwards in the beginning. So that's what we have. Now, how do we re represent this? Maybe first let's do it in a generical setting and say if we have a second order differential equation, how do we write that? We can just do the generic way where we say that x double prime equals, allow me to just get the same notation as here, a x prime plus b x plus a constant c. So this is a generic second order differential equation with constant coefficients. Then we will introduce y to be x prime, the first order derivative of x. And if we use that, then we can rewrite this as a coupled system 
where we have x prime equals to y, and y prime is exactly what is written over here, and a, that means a times x prime, but x prime is y, plus bx plus c as a constant. Now, if we want to write this on a matrix form, what do we have to do? Well, let's just write it as d dt on the vector x, y. Then we should find a matrix here. And since it's a linear system with factors x and y, and then we have plus some constant out here. So let's just take the first row here all the way across. x prime only depends on y, so we need a 1 there and get a 0 there, and there's no constant part there, whereas y prime has a factor a on y, we get that there, and b on x, and then it has a constant c out there. So this is the generic representation. Now, if we take the model from over here and look at this, how does that correspond to what we have here? Well, basically, we only have a constant, a and b are equal to zero, so the falling body here has the following d dt of x and y is a matrix where there's a one in the upper right corner and then just zeros, x, y plus and here the constant is minus g. So that's the equation that we have. And here comes, you can say, the same walking through that we define a state for position, a state for velocity. And then we say that in this case, we only observe the position. So that means that we will have c to be equal to a 1 and a 0. So we have this representation as is also given over there. So now for memory, make some space here. So that's the definition or description of the system in continuous time. Now, what we want to do is actually to get to discrete time. So one way of doing that is, well, we all know what the solution is to the falling body example. So what we get is that we get x1 as being the position. We can also call it x1 here and x2 there, x1, x2. And then the notation is the same. So x1 at time t equals minus d half t times t naught square plus t minus t naught times the initial velocity, which is x2 at t0, and then comes a plus x1 at time t0, so the initial height. So that's the solution for the position, and the solution for the velocity, x2 of t is equal to minus g times the how much time has evolved since the beginning of time, plus the initial velocity x2 of t0. So that's the system that we're dealing with. Now, if we do that, we actually sample this system. So instead of using t, we will use t equals k times the sampling period. So then we can write it as x1, and if we introduce the following, t equals k times the sampling period, and t0 equals k minus 1 times the sampling period, and if we plug that in everywhere, then this leads to the following in discrete time, we have x1 of kt 
equals minus d half, and the difference in time is just uppercase t, because we just have one sample difference, square plus t times the velocity just before, so that's x2 of k minus 1 t plus x1 of, and then the argument is the same, k minus 1 uppercase t. And for the velocity equation, x2 of k uppercase t, that's equal to minus g t plus the previous value of x2, that's x2 of k minus 1 times t, like that. Now, given this, what well, the next step is to look at how can we write this as a on a state space form. So if we sample, and let's just assume that uppercase t equals to 1, so we just define uppercase t to be unity without loss of generality, then we can rewrite the system as, let me do it on vector form, what do we have here? We have x1, x2 at time k, that equals something times x1, x2 at time k minus 1, plus something out here with an input, let's call the input g, just to define it. So let me take all the terms up here and just plug them in the right place. So this is part here is a constant term, so we get minus 1 half g out here. Then we have t times x2 at the previous time. So that means we get a 1 there to get that x2, and we have to plus x1 from there. Now for the velocity equation, we have a minus g, so that's minus 1 out here times g as a constant part, and then we have what was the previous velocity here, and no dependence on the previous position. So what you will notice here is when you compare this description that we have here, with the discrete time, with the continuous time equivalent down here, then in continuous time, I can see an error down here, be a zero there. What you see is that here you don't have you only have two elements that are non-zero, whereas up here we have five out of six elements that are non-zero. So the formulation of the system here is and that's generally so when you go from a continuous time description it's a more simple and fewer parameters than when you go to a continuous a discrete time description. So sometimes, with outside the scope of this course, you want to describe the system in continuous time and specify the parameters there, but then you estimate based on discrete time's observation. This is basically just defining what I just did over here. And then, in practice, we would have some noise, so we have some system noise and some observation noise. Maybe one of these will be very small, but for now, let's just assume that we have both kinds of noise in the system here. So what we want to do with that system is to, first of all, we want to predict what happens in the future, but we also want to, whenever we get a new observation, we want to say that before we thought we were maybe somewhere here, but now that we got an observation, we know that we are probably around here. So that's what you do forward in time, but there's also, when you're looking at an entire time series, then you may want to have an estimate of what happened somewhere in between. And then you can do what is called smoothing or, fil or filtering or inter interpolation to see, well, what is the best estimate given both the previous and the future observations. We'll focus on the first two parts. So before we get into this, there's one thing that is very nice about 
stage-based model is that you don't have to observe everything. So C, as in also this case, we have a two-dimensional system, either in discrete or continuous time, but we only observe one thing. And the question is, when is that sufficient? Well, that depends on so-called observability. So you have to look at a rank of CT as the column there, and then a column with C times A, and that times transpose, up to get to the order of m minus 1, a to the m minus 1 power. In this case, we have a second order system, so we just need c transpose and c a transposed. And if we do that, if we look at c transpose and a c a transpose matrix here, then c transpose that's just a 1 and 0, we have it down here. C times A, if you take this and pre-multiply on the A matrix up here, you can go through it yourself, you get a 1, 1. And it's easy to see that this matrix has full rank, which means that this system with the definition of the falling body, if you just observe the position, then we have observability. And here comes the formal way of doing it. So we're looking, want to get the rank of the matrix. One way is to do the QR decomposition in order to do that, but you can do that probably in other ways as well.